Hey there, this is Darren, founder of Density. Welcome to Density Insights, where we interview real estate experts for their expertise and opinions and help you to learn more about all things real estate. This is one part of the full interview with Asia Bankers Club's Damon Sung. Asia Bankers Club is a physical asset investment club with an extensive focus in the overseas real estate market in Southeast Asia. We're going in depth on Vietnam in this episode. You might have heard Vietnam's recent fast-paced growth and developmental craze. Not only is there a boom to the tech and manufacturing space, but a new generation of young, educated Vietnamese are entering the workforce. A big factor that can lead to economic upside and a positive surge to the real estate market. You can find other interviews with Damien and show notes on our blog, www.density.io. blog. As always, you can find everything we mentioned in this episode in the show notes including our thoughts, more about the guests, and all the tips and tricks. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button like you mean it to get our regular updates. Now, take a deep breath and buckle up for the show. Hope you enjoy. So Damien, what's going on in Vietnam right now? Wow, I mean, Vietnam, they've done so well with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, nobody's wearing masks in Vietnam. Really? Yes. Yeah, nobody wears masks, clubs, Bars, restaurants are all open. Um, I mean, even our developer in Vietnam, like they're having a company, company-wide uh, team building trip right now. So I can say Vietnam is back to normal for now um, without the you know outside world coming in. Mm. So how about the real estate world, which is, that's what we're here for. <sighs> I mean, Vietnam real estate has been really hot since, you know, I would say 2015. Um, especially amongst the the Koreans, Japanese, you know, Hong Kong and Singaporeans. Um, it's probably one of the, the hottest real estate market right now uh, for these investors. I see. So, you know, when it comes to Vietnam, you know, a lot of people obviously might not be aware of. Yeah. What are things that they should? And then also, how does it compare to like, you know, different places in Southeast Asia? How do you assess those projects? So for Vietnam, um, there are a few things for foreigners to invest. Um, there's a foreigner quota where you, foreigners are allowed to buy up to 30% of, of an apartment building. So if there's 100 units, uh, they can buy up to 30 units. But that doesn't necessarily mean that developer will you know, have to allocate 30 units for the foreign buyers. Um, you want to buy under foreign quota. Uh, another thing is Vietnam, no mortgage. Um, even as a local Vietnamese getting a mortgage, you're looking at rates of seven to eight percent right now. It was high. Yeah, but Holy I mean, crap. 2016 it was like ten to eleven. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, foreigners can get mortgage if you live in Vietnam and work in Vietnam, but the rate is seven to eight percent. So, hundred percent of the uh, Vietnam real estate investment is cash buy. I see. So it is tricky for the foreign investors. Then, am I correct? Um, I mean. It's not really tricky. It's just purely cash. Uh, you park your money. Uh, Vietnam is all about capital gain in the future. Mm -hmm. so. Did, is there any, because um, obviously Vietnam is a huge country. Yeah. Uh, what are some places that you think is meh, you know, not, not really good. Some of them are actually really, really good, underrated. And then obviously it's more about too, is like the reason behind that too. So Vietnam, I would say most of the investors focus on two, uh, two cities, Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh. Um, that's where your biggest uh, real estate uh, developments are happening at the moment. Um, underrated, I would say Haiphong. Haiphong is a very underrated uh, city. Um, it's, where is that? Haiphong is um, east of Hanoi. Uh, it's at the, the deep sea port. So you see a lot of uh, the European or the Japanese actually going there. And it's probably, I would say Haiphong will be the underrated city of Vietnam. So, so why, why is it underrated then? Not a lot of developments going on. Oh, yeah. okay. So very low supply, mm -hmm. very high demand. Cause so, you have a lot of expats there, but oh, they don't okay. have enough, uh, you know, high-end apartments or high-end condos. I see, I see. So, so that means like there are more expats want to live around the area. Yeah. And then, okay, that's cool. And then same time as this, right? How, how do you assess, is it different when it comes to looking at deals in Vietnam than other places of Asia? When it comes to, I mean, if you look at the payment terms and everything, I think it's similar. Um, well, besides Thailand, Thailand is, you know, 
um, like 25% and then 75% when mm -hmm. you do handover. Um, for Vietnam, for foreign developers, you could pay up to 50% oh, okay. before handover. Mm -hmm. So you pay 50%, so you buy a $2 million condo, you pay 1 million, and then the project's completing in three years. So you pay 1 million by 2022. And then you pay the rest when you're ready to hand over the apartment. Uh, but for local developers, um, they could ask you to pay up to 70%. So there's a little difference between a local developer and a foreign developer. I see. Uh, do you have any projects um, you know, on your hands right now? We just launched a uh, Hanoi project. Um, not, I guess this weekend, last weekend. Last weekend, yeah. okay. Um, Wait, well, it's 24th of 24th, January. Yeah, 24th there you of go. January. Yeah. Um, if you want to know more about it, I mean, you can contact us. Um, mm -hmm. But we also have other projects that's in the pipeline. Mm. Um, we just don't have enough weekends to do all the projects. Because you guys are too, you guys are too popular. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have a lot of good projects. Mm -hmm. So for that project, what's the play here? Is it is it like you know like the the community is building like there's more infrastructure like what's the play around that? The, the take for this project that we just launched is um, it's within a smart city. So Vinhomes is one of the biggest uh, companies in Vietnam. They build big city, you know, like townships. Um, so this project is actually located within the township. The biggest play is that it's right next to the MRT line. Um, the local Vietnamese, they don't know the importance of the MRT line yet because they oh. never had it. Okay. Um, if you're a, say you're a Hong Kong buyer, anything uh, close to MRT line, the prices are a lot higher. But Vietnam, there's nothing like that yet. Everybody's so focused, you know, still relying on motorbikes. Um, public transportation is not really a thing in Vietnam. So I would say the play for this, you know, the investment strategy would be to buy something near MRT, um, then watch it, you know, the capital gain. I see. So MRT, MRT is like the equivalent of MTR in Hong Kong yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. And then, so I think one more question before, because like, I know you live, you love Vietnam, yeah. lived there for a while. Uh, what do you think the outlook of it? And then for people to have, give like a low color in terms of like thinking about how they can relate to and what is going to become. So uh, Vietnam is a relatively young country, like 70% of the population is, you know, age under you know, 30. So if you look at the, the outcome of the whole country, I mean, it's a very vibrant, like, you don't have the the older generation mindset you know these are young kids spending more money um you know they buy nice things they want to live in nice places uh, the stock market is very nobody plays the stock market in vietnam so these guys they want to make they want to earn money they want to save money to buy real estate so that's one of the extra strategy for our investors to buy now and then sell to these locals you know 10 years down the line you make me sound like I want to move there right now. <laughs> I mean, it's not a bad place to live, you know, mm -hmm. uh, very low, you know, cost of living. Mm -hmm. uh, people are very, very friendly. Uh, the only thing is the, the traffic. Uh, oh yeah, I heard uh, about that. You got to learn how to walk, um, learn how to ride the motorbike. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I mean, it's a, it's a good place to live. I see. So if people want to talk to you more about you know, Vietnam or other projects as well, mm -hmm. how we suggest them to reach out to you and talk more? Oh, you could always email me, uh, our, our colleagues, and then we could you know, help you do a private consultation uh, or invite you to our you know, seminars uh, for our upcoming seminars. And yeah, we'll go from there. That's great. And then we're going to talk about Thailand next, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching. You know, majority of you don't stick around this far. So we're flattered and truly appreciate your attention. To return the favor, let us tell you our thought on this episode. I was looking to Vietnam a few years ago with my friends who were interested in investing in properties there. Back then in 2008, and the city wasn't developed at all. And so naturally I was skeptical, but after studying the market and the country's development, I am convinced that Vietnam has a lot of growth potential. Too bad I missed out on the deal. There are a few Good insights Damien hinted, such as the payment turn and the mortgage tips. Also, Damien's assessment of Haiphong as an underrated city made me curious and do more research. I was able to conclude the same thing and I believe this region is worth looking into for property investment. If you happen to have some great potential material and projects in uh, that area you would like to share, 
please send to us and maybe you can make an episode together and go in a deeper dive into that area. We have a more detailed version of our thoughts in the show notes. Beside that, you can find more about the guests and all the tips and tricks we have mentioned in the show notes too. Well, what do you think? Let us know in the comments section. Fun fact, do you know that more than 85% of you have subscribed to this show yet? Subscribe now to keep getting good stuff from us. Thanks for watching. What do you think of this episode? Please let us know in the comment below and be sure to hit the subscribe button to keep in touch with us for upcoming videos. But before we go, I want to give a big shout out to Patina Design Lab. They're the one who help us in making our brand, our direction, as well as these videos. They are a strategic design consultancy firm to help businesses with a wide range of design services from industrial design, branding, graphic design, art direction, content creation, and many more. They are a very talented bunch, and I urge you to check out their website for their work. That's all for today, and see you next time. Cheers.